So every now and then a classic underdog story pops up in the world of high stakes tech. And this one is a doozy. There's a tiny company in the UK that's being called the nation's answer to Palantir, you know, the American AI and data giant. This is shaping up to be a true David versus Goliath battle, and what's at stake is national security. So let's get into it. And that brings us to the central question we're digging into here, right? Is it actually possible for a small, relatively unknown British firm to go head-to-head -head with a global titan in the incredibly sensitive world of defense and intelligence? It sounds almost crazy, but the answer could seriously shape the UK's future. And when you put them side by side like this, the difference is, well, it's just staggering. You've got Palantir, the American behemoth, versus Defense Holdings PLC, a UK microcap. And their focus is worlds apart too. Palantir does this massive enterprise AI, while the challengers all in on something called sovereign AI. This table really sets the stage for just how lopsided this fight looks from the get-go. All right, so to really get a grip on what this challenger is up against, we've got to talk about the giant in the room. Let's take a look at just how dominant Palantir really is, especially inside the UK. Just look at that number, $60 billion. That's Palantir's market cap. And that's not just money, right? That's a war chest. It means they have immense power, almost unlimited resources, and a foothold all over the globe. And here's the thing. In the UK, Palantir isn't just some supplier you call up. They are woven into the very fabric of the country's critical systems. Their Gotham platform is all over the government, with huge contracts in the Ministry of Defense and even the National Health Service. And just recently, they landed a massive one and a half billion pound deal for military AI. So they aren't just a vendor, they are a core strategic part. Okay, so now let's flip the coin and talk about the David in the story. Enter Defense Holdings PLC. Now, they're not trying to be a better Palantir. No, their whole strategy, their whole identity is built around one very specific, very potent idea. And that idea is sovereign AI. This is their whole pitch. The thinking is, if you're dealing with a nation's deepest secrets, its most critical data, shouldn't the technology protecting it be built, owned, and controlled right here on home soil? It's a really powerful argument against being dependent on foreign tech, no matter how great it is. And look, this isn't just some pie-in-the-sky idea. They've got a really focused three-part plan. First, a core AI platform for national security. Second, AI for drones and other autonomous systems. And third, AI-powered cybersecurity. It's a tight, logical strategy, targeting the UK's most vital tech needs. So you're probably thinking, okay, great idea, but can they actually do it? Well, despite their size, they've got some pretty interesting cards to play. Let's look at the case for this underdog. This right here, this is their ace in the hole. They brought on General Lord Houghton, the former head of the entire UK military, as their chairman. Now, what does that get you? It gets you exactly what this quote says, unparalleled access and credibility. This isn't just a fancy title. We're talking about someone who can get a meeting with pretty much anyone in the defense world. That is a massive advantage. And they're not just talking a big game. They're actually making moves. Just look at their recent progress. They rebranded to fully focus on sovereign AI. They launched the first part of their core platform. And then they announced a major partnership with Google Cloud. These are real tangible steps that show they mean business. And this is so, so important. They got their foot in the door with a real world project, working with a UK police force. Now this is what you call a proof of value project. It's their chance to prove that they can handle sensitive public data safely and effectively, which is absolutely critical if they wanna win those bigger government contracts down the line. Okay, so things are looking up for the challenger, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Building a good story is one thing. Actually taking on a $60 billion titan is another. The mountain they have to climb is absolutely massive. I mean, this chart just says it all, doesn't it? The difference in financial muscle is just, it's hard to even wrap your head around. Palantir has what feels like a bottomless pit of money for research, hiring, and lobbying. Defense Holdings is playing in a completely different league. So let's just break down the hurdles here. You've got Palantir, who's already deeply entrenched, You've got that massive gap in money and scale we just saw. You've got a lot of people in the market who are frankly skeptical this can even be done. And on top of all of that, you're trying to hire the best AI talent in the world, and so is everyone else. It's a serious uphill battle. So why does any of this matter? I mean, it's just two companies going after contracts, right? Well, no. This is way, way bigger than that. This little corporate skirmish has huge implications for the entire UK. 
What we're really watching here is a test. It's a test of the UK's ambition and its ability to build its own critical technology. This is about whether a nation can control its own data, its own security, and ultimately its own destiny in a world dominated by tech superpowers. And that really leaves us with this one big question. For a country like the UK, is building a homegrown, sovereign AI champion an absolute strategic necessity? Or, when you look at the sheer scale of the competition, is it just an impossible dream? How that question gets answered will tell us a lot about the next few decades.